everybody the last video that we did um, I showed you how we make lifting eyes my objective this morning is to show you how how to use them or more accurately how not to use them because we're lifting we're lifting about a ton here it's really quite a serious operation and there are health and safety implications here so we've got to get it right and of course as always I don't as always, I don't pretend to be an expert here. This is only my view, and I'm not meaning to teach grandmothers, or to be politically correct, grandfathers how to suck eggs. Uh, there's some of you lads and lassies out there that know far more about this than I do. It's only my understanding of it. So at this stage, I'm going to, we're going to swap jobs here. Our lovely son, Brendan, is going to do the, the, uh, the energetic bits with the, the heavy uh, spreader bar and I'll operate the camera. Yep. This is the classical way of lifting a gardener engine. Um, as you can see, if the spreader bar, the spreader by the way is essential, it's essential to have a spreader bar and we've probably got too many shackles on there, but just with one shackle. We normally use, a, I think there are 16 mil uh, shackles there. If that spreader bar is lifted straight up, you'll agree the engine will hang perfectly horizontal and everything's completely safe. The danger is if you want to lift something at an angle. So if Brendan puts the spreader bar down now, we can maybe discuss that. We're gonna keep this um, fairly brief because we've still got sub-zero temperatures here at the moment. So um, I don't want to be outside for too long. You'll agree that that lifting eye there cannot move this way because it's supported there by the head. Equally so, this one can't move this way again because it's supported by the head so when you've got the spreader bar there that actually helps to position both eyes because this one will protect this one and this one will protect that one they, they work as a pair um, what i've done even in the past to be extra sure is i've run a chain winch between these two and actually tied them together so they're tight together so that makes it even extra strong what we'll show you now is, if we take the lifting eyes off, and pop them down in here, it's even more secure. Because if that rocker cover is on tight, and this one is on tight, the two lifting eyes are locked together. They can't, they can't stray. So that's again really quite safe. And you'll notice that the spacing on the holes on the spreader bar is such that you can lift the engine here, here, or here. Gardner are really very clever about this. You so you can see there the way the holes are spaced in the spreader bar in such a way that they'll pick up all of those eight positions. It's really very clever. That the width here gives this, gives this great strength. Whenever this spreader bar here was originally made, it didn't have this webbing on it. And we were lifting an 8LXP one day and it actually bent. So luckily enough, it didn't fall. There was no mishap. So that's why we had to strengthen it in this way. The original Gardner spreader bar was really very clever. It was essentially a, a, a triangular shape and it was made out of aluminium, believe it or not. So it was really light. This here is really quite heavy. Um, I'll just wait now and tell you what it, what it weighs. Oh my goodness, I must get new glasses. It's 14 kilos. 10 and 4, 14 kilos. It's, it's, it's quite heavy whenever you're trying to operate it single hand. Right. So this is um, a 6LW. Quite a heavy engine because it's cast iron crankcase. You'll see I've lifted it in the suggested way. You'll see how I've lifted there. Look, it's hanging quite quite level despite the fact that it's got a, a gearbox. Let's... Let's set it down now and see can we lift it at an angle. You can see she's hanging at quite an angle there and I've achieved that by moving the spreader bar forward. We can decide on the angle that we can hang at by the position of this point here relative to the centre of the engine. That should be fairly obvious. The spreader bar is so useful and so flexible. So what happens if you get it wrong? Well, the consequences are really quite serious. What can happen is the eye can actually bend. You see that there? Now, you'll be lucky if you get away with that. 
ultimately what can happen is the stud will break. And whenever studs break, things fall. People can get hurt. Stuff can get damaged. Engines can be really, perhaps irreparably damaged. So it's really, really important to get this right. This is uh, not something to be taken lightly. There's the stud. Completely broken. Okay, just one final note. Okay. So, um, just before we leave this subject, I just want to go through or go over another couple of points with you. Just pretend for the minute that that's the top of the head. And we've got our lovely half inch BSF not tightened down there, torqued down there as it should be. We put on the lifting eye very quickly, screw it down to the bottom. It only needs to be finger tight. It only needs to be finger tight. There's no need to get a big lever in here and crank that up tight. That's daft. There's a few reasons for that. Number one, if we over tighten it, we're already putting stress on the poor wee threads in there that are doing their best to hang on. That's number one. Second point is, if you tighten this down too much, it's tightening down on the nut at the bottom. And it can interfere with the torque settings there. And also, there's a danger that whenever this is over tight and you unscrew it, it'll actually unscrew the nut with itself, believe it or not. And again, that's not very healthy. You're certainly interfering with the, the, the fit of that nut on the head there. Okay, now, let's take a wee look at this, um, the central point that I wanted to make. The force on here has to be straight up. It can't be at an angle. Why? Because if I measure the overall length, it is 190 mil. It's 180 mil from here where the force is being applied down to here. Now, what's happening there is if you try to um, pull at an angle here, the lifting eye is actually hinging about there like that. You'll agree? So it's putting stress on the side of the thread here. Now, because this is only 19, 18 mil and the overall length is 190 mil, that's an amplification of about 10. So if the force acting at an angle, acting this way, horizontal, um, is let's say one ton, that's multiplied by 10. This means it's 10 ton down here where the threads are coming under pressure. Now, of course, the force will never be perfectly horizontal. That'd be daft. That'd be completely crazy. But even at at 30 degrees, say, 30 degrees is probably about, let me say, something like about that, say. But that's about 30 degrees. If the force on here, if that there is one ton, then at 30 degrees, this is half a ton. But that half a ton is multiplied by 10, which gives you five ton on here. Is it any bit of wonder these things break whenever the applied force is at the wrong angle? You get my point. All right. I hope that was of interest to you. And thanks a lot to our lovely son, Brendan, who is, by the way, a professional ca cameraman. Thanks a lot for his help with this. On we go to the next one. Awesome.